And I'm also not clear on when Anderson is supposed to be cleared. I mean, it, there was something that come out had come out where Ed Soros thought he should be cleared at the end of October, and I agree with that. Per the way USADA has done in the past, and including with me, so I know firsthand, it is the date that you were tested. For some reason, in Anderson's case, they have elected to say, no, it's the date that he was notified, and that's in November, and that would take him out of the running for the Madison Square Garden card. But Anderson has also been lobbying pretty hard for some other fights, including George St. Pierre, who perhaps Anderson has gotten word that they would like him to fight John Jones. And so before that's done or before he has to turn it down, he's trying to position himself for another fight. That is speculative at best. I have no evidence to what I just said there, but there does appear to be some things, and there does appear to, there's always some rhythms, particularly with the veterans in this sport. The veterans in this sport, they all have patterns. They all have tells. They're not great poker players, but they try to be. So you can pick up on these tells pretty quick. Anderson Silva has had the same recipe since his time started in the UFC. He gets offered a fight. He refuses the fight. Okay, The media runs with that, acts like he's scared. Once that media starts to die down, he then accepts the fight. Then, then he gets a lot of headlines for that. Then as the fight gets a little bit closer, he has somebody within his team put out a report of an injury and that the fight could be off. Anderson never corrects it. He lets it go. Headline, day after day of headlines, and once that starts to sink in the headlines, Anderson comes up. I have no idea where that report came from. I'm feeling great, and thank you all for your interest, and, and the fight is on. And that has been his recipe from day one. That's what he does to keep his name up in the headlines. Refusal of the fight, acceptance of the fight, false injury, correction of the false injury, fight goes on. It's worked. It's not a brilliant strategy, but it's his. It's his strategy. Now, for the first time in his career, he's actually calling guys out. That's never happened with Anderson. I mean, it's just not the way he does things, and it makes you wonder, well, why? Why are things changing now? And my speculation doesn't have to be accurate. I'm speculating that he has been offered a fight or potentially talked to about a fight that he does not like. So he is working overtime to try to build interest in some other fight. That's my speculation based on nothing. It could be. I believe that I'm right there. But uh, I will offer for you, there's also a, a difference in mindset, right? When Anderson was getting called out, he was the champion. He's now not the champion. He's a challenger. So it could change things. But I think that it's fun, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun when Dana comes out and tells us who that main event is going to be. Now, I could we could all be let down, and maybe we're going to have one star in there, like for John Jones. John Jones on that card, but maybe it's not with the opponent, and they're just going to take the gamble and go, look, comeback fights are big fights. It's a comeback fight in some regard. Should he win this, he'll be the immediate contender. They may also strip Daniel Cormier, right? That's coming. Daniel's not defending that belt. UFC may let him run with this for a little bit, but they may say, look, Daniel, you had your fun. You're not a 205-pounder. We're going to take that strap away. We're going to do an interim title, and it's going to be John versus somebody. 